Hi guys, my name is Emily, long time no see. Put it on Instagram earlier this week that I wanted to film and I asked if you guys had any requests and there were some excellent requests, some excellent suggestions that I do really wanna film. But I think the most timely one is the mid-year check-in thing. We're gonna start with my just generally mid-year check-in. So I set myself 17 goals for 2018. I'm not doing so great. I will be 100% honest with you. So goal number one was to have the Dark Tower series ready by March 2nd. That did not happen. So I anticipated having a ton of time with minimum wage in Canada going up to $14. I anticipated hours being cut and that was not the case. Our team got smaller. We work more often <laughs> than we did before. The Dark Tower series is something I'm still working on. As I read things, I'm tweaking my scripts, but it, it was not ready by March 2nd, so I failed there. Goal number two was to reread 12 books. I'm four out of 12 books away from that goal. It was supposed to be one a month. Clearly, I'm not doing that great. Number three was to participate in the Wheel of Time Along, which I really tried. I wanted to use the audiobook to reread the first book and then reread and then read all the other physical books for the first time. That didn't happen. I really wasn't enjoying the audiobook and then I fell so far behind and at this point I'll get to it when I get to it. Number four is to explore Russian fairy tales. So this came out of my interest in Russian fairy tale and folklore following reading The Bear and the Nightingale. And I actually picked up a book on Russian fairy tales and haven't read it. So that, that can still happen. Number five was to reread all of the Tamora Pierce books in anticipation for the new release, which didn't happen. But I still have time to reread them if, you know, I can get my shit together. Number six was to continue to work on the Sex and YA series, which is something that I've been working on in the background and I continue to work on in the background. Number seven is zero by 2020, read 10 by one. So I actually forgot about the read 10 by one. Um, I have definitely been buying books. Speaking of which, number eight was to buy zero books in January, which I failed epically at. I think I bought more books in the month of January than I have in the rest of the year simply because like not allowing myself to buy books led to like, oh, it's been like three weeks. It's the end of January. There's a sale. And I just bought all these things that I don't know. I honestly don't know if the book buying ban was productive. Number nine was to do Olingo every day, which I was doing really, really well at. And then I had one thing that sort of threw me off. I forgot to do Olingo one day and I broke like a hundred day streak. After I broke that like really intense streak, I had absolutely no motivation to do it every day. I could do five days and then I'd skip the weekend or I'd do 10 days and then I'd skip a day because I was like, eh, my streak's not that big. But now I have a 30 five or 36 day streak doing really well. I'm really pleased with myself. So I like, I am working on it. It's not every day, but having that goal in mind is helpful. Number 10 was to take a copy editing course, which I haven't done yet. Number 11 was to participate in NaNoWriMo, which is in November. Number 12 was to be dairy free by 2019. And I am working towards that. I didn't realize how much cheese I ate until I started tracking my dairy. And I didn't realize how much dairy affected my skin until I stopped eating it. Um, and every once in a while I will treat myself, have a little bit of dairy or dairy is in something that like is gluten free because I have to be gluten free. When we went out for nachos with my friends and like the nachos are gluten free, it's the only thing that I can really eat at the bar. To split a plate of nachos is what we did and eating the cheese, my skin flared up. So feel like it's a very realistic goal to be 99% dairy free. Number 13 is to visit one new province. And in July, I will be visiting four. I will be heading out to Atlantic Canada. We are going to stay in Nova Scotia with my partner's family. And we're going to visit PEI and Newfoundland. And I think we're not doing anything in New Brunswick, but we will be driving through New Brunswick. So technically four provinces, although at some point I would like to properly visit New Brunswick. Number 14 was a hike every week. And I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this down because when I wrote it down in January, it was January and miserable. And like, you don't want to go out on the trails when they're like sheets of ice. Obviously I didn't hike every week since January. Number 15 was just podcast. 
No specific goals. Good job, Emily. Number 16 was to post on Instagram every day for the whole year. Did not do that. The 17th goal was to keep track of my books and films that I have been watching and reading, which has actually been really great because we're gonna get into the mid-year freakout tag now and having these like pages to look back on has been really helpful. With those goals sort of checked in, obviously I'm not doing well, which is okay, it's fine. Um, I haven't been feeling that motivated. Let's get into the mid-year freakout tag. The mid-year freakout tag was co-created by Ellie from Ellie Jane and Chammy from That Is Chammy, and I will link them both in the description down below, and I will post the questions in the description box down below, because in trying to find the original video and the questions, you get all of, like, the currently most popular videos. None of those have put the questions in, so I would have to watch their entire video, which ranges from 9 to 30 minutes. So I'm leaving the questions downstairs for you. You're welcome. So question number one is the best book you've read so far in 2018. The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. So this is her debut novel. It um, is an exploration of grief and identity and it is so beautifully written. So Lee's mother dies by suicide. Obviously that is a huge trauma for her and her family but she believes that her mother has come back as this red bird that she keeps seeing and the red bird leads her to investigate her mother's past her maternal grandparents and she actually ends up traveling to Taiwan and learning more about her mother and why her mother was so cut off from her family. Interspersed is a sort of YA romance with her best friend, like she has feelings for her best friend and the two of them really communicate well and explore um, their feelings in art. And there's just a lot of elements that I felt really worked well together and I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely something that I will reread. So that is the best book I've read so far in 2018. But the next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2018. Now I haven't read any direct sequels. For me that would be The Wind Through the Keyhole, which is a 4.5 Dark Tower novel. This is just beautiful mindfuckery. It is what the series is in a nutshell. It is a story within a story within a story, layers of storytelling in this sort of spiraling chaotic gyre and it is wonderful and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So for me this is the best sort of continuation on in a series, the best sequel. A new release that I haven't read yet but want to, I'm putting it on here because I've already started it but I haven't finished it, and that is Land of Lost Borders, Out of Bounds on the Silk Road by Kate Harris. So Kate Harris is a Canadian. She actually grew up and lived not far from where I live, um, and she had a sort of unusual upbringing. Her parents bought a farm in the middle of nowhere with like a dilapidated sheep shed on it and they lived in a trailer. She, like the five members of her family, so Kate and her two brothers and her mom and dad, lived in a trailer while they fixed up the sheep shed to be livable and so they spent a lot of time outdoors, in nature. She has a very adventurous spirit which led her to um, breaking into Tibet, like illegally crossing the borders, sneaking under a fence with her friend, and cycling down parts of the Silk Road. And so um, it's her adventures in cycling, reflections on her life. I kept seeing it advertised on Instagram, first of all, and I was like, this is a beautiful book. It's very aesthetically pleasing. What is this? So I started looking into it and I read The Dust Flap and I was like, I need this in my life. As a person who's feeling a little bit lost, looking at somebody who actively seeks out the lost feeling, actively seeks out the experience of being borderless and sort of unanchored, I thought would be interesting. And um, I'm really enjoying it so far, but it is a new release that I technically haven't read yet because I haven't finished it. Question number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and for me that is... Sorry if you can hear the washing machine, I'm not sure if it'll pick up, but that's what that weird noise is. My most anticipated release of this year is What If It's Us by Becky Abertali and Adam Silvera, and that comes out on October 9th, 2018, and I just... I love Becky Abertali. Albertali? Abertali. 
and I have read one of Adam Silvera's books and I did really enjoy it. I read They Both Die at the End and I liked it. So I want to see the two of them work together. I really want this story. So most anticipated book of the year is that. I'm going to skip to number seven and you will see why in a minute. So number seven is your favorite new author, debut or new to you, and that is Amber Smith, who wrote The Way I Used to Be, which is a beautiful story. I love the four-part narrative structure. It's following Eden through four years of her high school experience. In her first year, she is sexually assaulted by a friend of the family, and we get to see how that trauma affects her as a human over four years. I thought it was beautifully done, beautifully written, and I loved it so much that I picked up her second book on a whim, knowing nothing about it, and this leads me to number five, which is my biggest disappointment. So the writing is still the same quality, the similar structure is there, Amber Smith is now looking at a family who has experienced domestic abuse. The father of this family is a police officer and uh, physically, verbally, emotionally abuses his wife and three children. And the mother at some point ends up killing their father. And so the mother is in jail, going to trial, and the three children are sort of unanchored. And so it's just exploring family dynamics. And again, it has a four-part structure, but it's four seasons, which you would think would work well because you have the summer, fall, winter, spring. So you're looking at a certain life cycle. Um, you would think it would work well. It felt more disjointed to, for me anyways, it felt more disjointed to cross four seasons than it did to cross four years in Eden's life. And it was just, it was such a disappointment because I loved the way I used to be so much that the last to let go was just, it was the biggest disappointment. Six is the biggest surprise. My biggest surprise is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell for two reasons. First of all, apparently the book has faded. I don't know if you can tell, but this is definitely more like a yellow green and the spine is faded to a mint green, which is, you know, that was kind of fun pulling it off the shelf and being like, oh, you are a different color now. The second surprise, other than just the physical transformation of the book, um, so I put this on my 12 books to reread in 2018 because I remember devouring this book. In my first year on booktube, it was really hyped. Everyone was reading it. It was a quick read. I got sucked into the world, but I had some issues with the way rape culture was treated on campus. Reading this a second time, there was so much that I'd forgotten about, like the father's mental health issues, the sister's mental, mental health issues, Kath's mental health issues, the sort of weird age gap between Kath and Levi. Like, Levi is 21. Kath is a college freshman. She's a froshy. She's straight out of high school, never really had a serious relationship, and this 21-year-old, like, really relentlessly pursues her. Like, the sex scenes, if they, if they even were sex scenes, like, I was under the impression that they did have sex, but reading it this time, I'm not so sure. Like, I'm really not sure what they're doing. There's so many things going on. I didn't even care about, like, the rape jokes. I, it was just... It wasn't what I remembered. It was really hard to get into. Like, I remember last time devouring this in an afternoon. It took me, like, a couple of weeks to read this. By the end, I was just sort of indifferent towards it. My biggest surprise is that rereading this made me like it less. Uh, number eight is your new newest fictional crush. Pass? I don't have a new favorite fictional crush. Number nine is your newest favorite character. And that is actually Leah from Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertelli. So when I read Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, it's very much narrated from Simon's perspective. The Leah that Simon introduces us to, I wasn't a huge fan of, but reading from her perspective, I fell in love with Leah and she is a fantastic character. I really hope that Leah gets a movie. A book that made you cry. I am honestly not sure 
if there have been any books that made me cry. A book that made you happy. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda was a reread. Brought me so much joy. I love this story. Problems and all. Then I watched the film and just the film made me cry. I can tell you that the film made me cry. I watched that film uh, not that long ago when it came out on Blu-ray and from like the middle of the movie when Simon is outed on Christmas onwards just ugly tears, like sobbing. Number 12 is your favorite book to film adaptation that I saw this year, and that is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. So I watched the film first because I was watching all of the Oscar nominations for Best Picture, and then fell in love with the film and read the book and fell in love with the book, and like both play nicely on my understanding of the other, and I absolutely loved both the book and the film. I think they did an excellent job adapting that. 13 is the favorite video you have done so far this year. And to be honest with you guys, I haven't produced that much content because I haven't been feeling all that great. And there's nothing this year that I'm particularly proud of, unfortunately. Maybe I'm being too harsh on myself. Number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. I think The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu, who wrote For Today I'm a Boy, and who um, I had the opportunity to hear speak when I was doing my master's at McMaster. She just seems like a great human. I absolutely love this cover. I didn't even realize that Kim Fu had released a new book, but I saw the cover in the stacks at work and I was like, oh my gosh, I need this. It's gorgeous. I love her. I need to read this. Which brings me to 15. What books do you need to read by the end of this year? This one. Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I need to finish reading Dimitri Derevelt by Andrea Steinhoffel. Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. And then I need to read the books that I said I would reread, which is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. The Shining by Stephen King. Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. A Passage to India by E.M. Forrester. The first three books in the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. Magic by Angie Sage. And Ink Spell by Cornelia Funk. That is where I'm at. That is where we are at with the middle of the year. It's been a bit of a weird year. I'm not gonna lie. Like the first half of this year has been really hard and I feel like that's reflected in the amount of content that I've produced. If you don't produce videos you probably don't know what it's like. I have tried to force myself to make videos. I film something and you get into the editing process and you, you can tell. You can tell that when I filmed it I didn't want to do it. You can tell that I'm not into it. That's not the kind of content I want to put out there. Like I would rather produce less content that you can tell that I really enjoy what I'm doing, that I'm really excited to talk about the things that I'm talking about, rather than just producing content for the sake of producing content. Because I want to make things that bring me joy, I want to make things that bring you joy, that are enjoyable, that are pleasant to watch. That's why. And I'm working on it. I am working on making some changes. If you've stuck around and you've waited for the content, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I'm hoping that in the second half of the year, the changes that I am starting to make in my life will reflect in the amount of content that you see. This has been sort of my mid-year check-in, mid-year freak-out, mid-year whatever. And it's actually on time this year. I think last year I did it in August, which was well past the middle of the year. So, um, good job, Emily. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you do that brings you joy? Like, what do you do in your everyday life that you look forward to, that guarantee makes you happy, brings you joy? Because let's talk about joyful things. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will hopefully see you very soon. Bye.